Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila! You have an activated system for only $14. The watch. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and today we have a new video, this time about some rumors that uh, most of you may not know about, but some other individuals, some of you may already know about it, so yeah, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we have an APU, a new APU leak, uh, more than one in fact, uh, some of them by Tech Labs, but the interesting point is that there are several points about it, okay? The first one is that we finally have a Ryzen 7 APU, 8 cores, 16 threads. This is kind of intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. Whatever, it makes me think. It makes me think in a certain way because if you think properly, for example, the first generation APUs have, uh, they, they are called the 2000 Gen, so for example, Ryzen 5 2400G, but they are in fact a mix of both generations, a mix of the first and the second because the, the 2400G has the second generation IMC and some improvements, but it also has the first generation Zen cores instead of the Zen Plus cores. And having the first Ryzen 7 APU makes me think about the next generation CPUs. And it makes me think that, for example, the next generation Ryzen 5 will have 8 cores and 16 threads. I believe so because, for example, in terms of the... Um, in terms of architecture, it will change a lot, and we already know that after the third gen, the third gen Ryzen, so the Ryzen 3000 generation CPUs, we can already, Zen 2, we can already have uh, in the same package 8 cores and 16 threads instead of 4 cores, 8 threads. Um, and this, in this case, this Ryzen 7 APU is in a single package, so basically we can easily make the next generation Ryzen 5 to be 8 cores and 16 th threads because it wouldn't make sense because people would just buy would just buy the APU and use it as a CPU instead of buying the Ryzen 5 CPU because I think that this Ryzen 7 APU will be less expensive or same as much as expensive uh, as the next Ryzen 5 generation. So yeah, it would make no sense. I think that the, re the next Ryzen 5 generation will have 8 cores and 16 threads also. Now the second thing where I base my argument that the, this APU is a mix between the next generation CPUs and this Zen 2, basically a mix of Zen 3 and Zen 2, is that it was found running, it was found running DDR2333 MHz. And it was found in another leak running DDR 5300 MHz. 5300 MHz. Okay, we have seen Ryzen, we have seen Zen 2, Ryzen 3000 generation running. These frequencies, okay. And even the IT or Zen 2 CPUs uh, can't run these frequencies uh, out of the box because you, you need to tweak them a bit, raise frequencies, raise voltages, because they won't do it out of the box. So it leads me to believe once again that we have a mix of both generations, Zen 2 and Zen 3, in this same APU. The most interesting thing apart from the DDR4 is the FCLK, is the Infinity Fabric Frequency, which, is, which usually sits at half your DDR frequency. But there is a catch, for example on Ryzen 3rd generation, on the CPUs, for example Ryzen 5 3600 and Ryzen 7 3700X, whatever, um, usually the FCLK frequency goes to a max of 1900. Sometimes you can get a bit more, but not much more than that, so 1900 on the FCLK, Infinity Fabric Speed, which basically um, obligates you to use a max uh, RAM frequency of 3800 MHz, because once you go over that, the ratio comes from 11 to 12, so half, and for example, if you are using 400 MHz RAM, 
it will actually be instead of 2000 FCLK, it will be 1000 FCLK, okay? Because it is one one of your RAM's true frequency, which is half your DDR, your DDR frequency. So basically your RAM's true frequency will be 2000 MHz if you are using DDR4000, so double data rate, and double. So reduce it by half, it goes to 2000 MHz, the true frequency, which will be the true frequency of the Infinity Fabric. Uh, but once you go above that, above the 1900 MHz, you actually go to one half. So if you are using 4000 MHz, you will be actually having 1000 FCLK and that will have reduced performance. But that's not the case with this APU because it was found running at 2133 MHz FCLK and uh, the leaks, the, the people that, that uh, presented the leaks, they said that almost any APU, almost any Ryzen 7 APU would be able to run the FCLK at 2200, which means that you can actually run 4400 MHz RAM with FCLK at 2200 MHz and the performance boost will be insane from 3800 and 1900 MHz. That alone will be a really huge boost. And that leads us to the other point, which is the integrated graphics, the iGPU. So, as we all know, the higher the DRAM frequency, the higher the GPU will perform, because the VRAM frequency will be the Infinity Fabric frequency. So, imagine that you have a higher FCLK, higher Infinity Fabric frequency, in this case, like I said before, it reaches 2200 MHz, it means that the integrated graphics VRAM will be at 2200 MHz, so this will be a huge boost in terms of performance for the integrated GPU. This alone, of course, because there are more things. Those things include several architectural changes, and we have kind of a Vega 2 architecture instead of Vega 1, so the, the, the iGPU itself will perform faster and now we have even faster VRAM frequencies, we have even faster uh, DDR4 frequencies. But funny enough, now the top tier APU, which is a Ryzen 7, has a Vega 8 instead of a Vega 11. So we are kind of decreasing the performance, right? Uh, not really because it is Vega 2 and not Vega 1 and the boost frequency is up to 2100 MHz. While we can now reach, let's say, 1700 with severe overclocking on Ryzen 5 3400G. And we now go to 2100, more RAM frequency, more Infinity Fabric frequency, which will boost things a lot. A lot. And that's pretty damn great. I'm excited. I can't say I, I'm not excited because I am. And well, like I said before, this is a huge thing if you look into it, because we'll finally have a really uh, well-performing APU. I, I estimate that this APU will perform around the GTX 1050 Ti, more or less that, um, because like I said before, we have several changes, the, the integrated graphics architecture is changed, we have way higher CPU performance in this APU, more cores, more threads, uh, basically we have Zen 2, so we have more IPC, more single core performance, we have everything more and everything uh, to go right in the APU area. So many people may, may instead of buying um, a GPU and a lower end CPU, they will buy this, this APU, uh, run it with the iGPU for some time and then grab for example, uh, a better GPU to pair with it because it will perform really, really well. As for example, in terms of inner latencies, it will be really damn great. And it was found running at around 45, 47 nanoseconds. And for example, Zen 2 runs, um, while Tinker runs at, let's say, 65 nanoseconds. So we are seeing actually 20 nanoseconds less. 20 nanoseconds less, which is a lot in terms of performance uh, and which will matter a lot for, for example, people uh, dealing with music, uh, music production and other things. So, yes, we are seeing some several and some really good differences here. So, I'm hyped. And well, guys, I know that I talk a lot. 
Thanks a lot for watching, seriously. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Tell me what you think about these leaks and what are your opinions on these same leaks. Go to the comment section, leave your comment there because I really want to know what you think about this topic. I myself, like I said, I'm really hyped and I will be sure to buy this new APU once it comes out or maybe if AMD wants to send me one. I won't say no because I really want to test it. I want to see that iGPU performance and I want to see how it fares in terms of CPU only. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.